There were dinosaurs as far as the eye could see, each with a great, big, thunderous roar. The mighty Blue Rex had the most magnificent roar of all. Listen. But there was one little dinosaur who wasn't quite as big or quite as loud as the others. Her name was Stella, and she was the cutest baby Triceratops in the land of the dinosaurs. She had three little horns on her head and four tiny feet that made itty bitty stumps. Stella wanted to roar like her friend Blue Rex more than anything else. I can do it. I can do it. No matter how hard Stella tried, she couldn't roar like her friend Blue Rex could. But that wasn't going to stop her. One day, Stella and her friend Blue Rex heard Munch, munch, roar! Munch, munch, roar! So they stomped on over to see who it was. It was the T-Rexes, all munching on their lunch together. They were big and tall, towering above the trees. Stella asked the T-Rex, How do you roar, dinosaur? We munch, munch, roar! Munch, munch, roar! Oh, oh, oh! So Stella munched too and tried to roar just like the T-Rexes. Munch, munch, a reap! Munch, munch, a reap! But still she couldn't roar. Yeah. So Blue Rex told her to keep on trying. If she practiced and practiced, she'd find her roar. That's when they heard... Splish, splash, roar! Splish, splash, roar! So they stomped on over to see who it was. (sighs) It was the Spinosaurus dinosaurs, all playing together in the water. They had big sails on their backs to splish and to splash. Stella asked, How do you roar, dinosaur? We splish, splash, roar. We splish, splash, roar. So Stella splished and she splashed with all her might and tried to roar just like the Spinosaurus. Splish, splash, reap. But still, she couldn't roar. (sighs) Blue Rex told her to keep on trying. If she practiced and practiced, she'd find her roar. (laughs) That's when they heard... Flap, flap, roar! Flap, flap, roar! So they stomped on over to see who it was. It was the pterodactyls, all flying around the tip top of a mountain. They had long wings and massive beaks. Stella asked, How do you roar, dinosaur? We flap flap roar! Flap flap roar! So Stella flapped her arms as hard as she could and tried to roar just like the pterodactyls. But she still couldn't roar. And now it was getting dark, and Stella was starting to feel sleepy from such a long day of munching and splashing and flapping. (sighs) I'm sleepy. Stella and Blue Rex went home and cuddled up in their bed of leaves, nestled inside a giant dino footprint. (sighs) Stella asked Blue Rex, Why must my roar take so long? Uh, Where could it be? 
And like always, Blue Rex assured her that if she kept practicing and practicing, she'd find her roar. She could keep practicing tomorrow. So Stella closed her eyes and took some deep dino breaths. Uh, knowing that tomorrow was a brand new day, and maybe she'd find her roar then. Good night, Blue Rex. Stella was so sleepy she couldn't help but yawn. But instead of a yawn... A roar came out! I roared! I did it! I really did it! Sure enough, Stella had roared for the very first time. Her friend Blue Rex was so, so proud of her. And so Stella went to sleep with a smile on her face and a big roar waiting to come out again tomorrow. The end. Our story begins deep underground in Detective Gopher's dark tunnel. It was nighttime, so it was extra dark. Oh, except for one wall of the tunnel that was covered with all sorts of blinking gadgets and gizmos. Bow, 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 bow. Every detective needs gadgets and gizmos. Isn't that right, Detective Blue? Bow, bow. It was Detective Gopher, the furry mystery solver himself. He had brown fur, a pink nose, and looked almost like a mouse. I'm not a mouse. I'm a gopher. He was small, but mighty, and even a little cute. I'm not cute. He was just about to turn off all his gadgets and gizmos and go to bed when he got a call. Hello, this is Detective Gopher and Detective Blue. Bye-bye. It was Farmer Hen calling with a mystery. She said, <laughs> Hello, detectives! A loud snore's keeping everyone at the farm awake! Bah! Bah -bah. Wow! What does the snore sound like? They listened closely to the phone and heard this sound. <laughs> hmm. We'll be right there. Detective Gopher and Detective Blue zoom to the farm in the Gopher Mobile. But when they got there, the snore was gone. Hmm. I don't hear any snore. But then they heard. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Farmer Hen heard the mooing and said, Now the snore's over by the cows! How did the snore get all the way over there? But there wasn't any time to lose. Detective Gopher and Detective Blue zoomed over to the cows in the gopher mobile. But when they got there, it was quiet. Hmm. Now where did that snore go? Oink, 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 oink. The cows heard the oinking and said, Now the snore's over by the pigs. Follow that snore. Boop, 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 boop. Detective Gopher and Detective Blue zoomed over to the pigs in the gopher mobile. And when they got there, they could hear the snore they'd been chasing all night. The pig said, Help us, detectives! That snore is keeping us awake! We're on to ya, snore! We're on to ya! And so Detective Gopher and Detective Blue listened very carefully. Listen with them. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Who could be making that snore? Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Hmm. It kind of sounds like a ribbit. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. That's when Detective Blue saw the snorer. Ribbit, 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 ribb
rabbit, rabbit. It was a frog asleep on a lily pad floating rabbit. down the stream. The snoring frog had floated past the chickens, past the cows, rabbit, rabbit, and now past the pigs. And he's snoring up a storm. Rabbit, rabbit. Excuse me, Mr. Frog. <laughs> Whoa! Sorry to wake you, but I think you floated a long way from home. Ribbit, ribbit. The frog looked around and realized he was a long way from home. He said, Oh, uh, no. I need to get back to my family in Frog Pond. Ribbit. Boo, boo. Well, take it there. Hop into the gopher mobile. Detective Gopher and Detective Blue took Mr. Frog back to Frog Pond where all his family was still fast asleep. All snoring, of course. Thanks for bringing me back home. Of course, all in a day's work. Now everyone can go to sleep. Good night, Mr. Frog. Good night. Ah. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. With the case of the mysterious snore solved, Detective Gopher could finally head back home. Good night, Detective Blue. Bow, bow. Detective Gopher snuggled into his warm, cozy bed. Ah. Where the only case that he'd have to worry about was his pillowcase. Yeah. At least until the morning. You can ask your parents to subscribe to Nick Jr.'s Blue's Clues and new YouTube channel for new videos every week.